Okay, so last time we talked about buffers and we said buffers are solution that if you add acid or base, they tolerate the addition of acid or base, the pH doesn't shift that much. And we said to have a buffer solution, you need a weak acid and its conjugate or a weak base and its conjugate. And the last thing I left you with, I gave you a take home problem, which I know you, you, you at home, but hopefully you did the take home problem. So let's do the take home problem together. I ask you for a pH of HF solution. That was part one. And the other thing that I, had, I gave you in the question, I also gave you the Ka. I said the Ka was 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay. Now, HF is a weak acid. HF is a weak acid. Now, if you are a weak acid, remember, you can do hydrolysis. So I have a weak acid, so HF is a weak acid. That means it's going to have equilibrium, right? HF is an acid, acid is gonna lose a hydrogen, it's gonna become F minus, and then because HF is an acid, water would act like a base. We've talked about that, so water is gonna get the hydrogen. This is the equilibrium I have. So every time you have a weak acid, make sure you do this equilibrium that is going on. Okay, here's the equilibrium. And every time that you have a weak acid, we say you have an equilibrium, and also you're gonna have an ice table. Why do you have an ice table? Because you have a weak acid. You have a weak acid, you gotta have an ice table, and you're gonna do the equilibrium. Okay, the ice table, the initial. At the beginning, what do you got? At the beginning, you have 0 0.20 molar hydrofluoric acid. You have none of the, F minus and hydronium, then minus X, X and X. Again, this is an equilibrium table that you have seen over and over again. It's the same thing for weak acid. Okay, so again, weak acid and bases, you're gonna have equilibrium, you have equilibrium, you have an ice table, and every time you have an equilibrium, you have an equilibrium constant. The equilibrium constant for acids are Ka. And remember, equilibrium constant is the same thing as before. It's product over reactant. And my Ka here is given is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So it's product over reactant. So it's going to be x squared over 0 0.20 minus x. Okay, so now I'm going to solve for x. If I solve for x, I get 0 0.01 to molar. Now, what is x going to be? What is x going to be? Now, x is going to be the concentration of F minus. That doesn't do me any good. x is going to be the concentration of hydronium. That does me a lot of good, right? So, x is going to be my hydronium concentration because I can figure out the pH that way. You know that the pH is minus log of hydronium concentration. So, minus log of this, which is 0.012, is gonna give me the pH, which is 1.92, is going to be my pH. Easy problem, hopefully you got this done. And remember, I have two sig fig, and when you have a log, the two sig fig, it has to be after the decimal place, because the one is technically for this zero. So this is two sig fig, matches up with that two sig fig. All right, so far so good. Now, this was your take home problem. What is the pH of a solution that is 0 0.20 molar in HF and 0 0.10 molar in NAF? Again, I have a weak acid, right? I have a weak acid. I'm gonna write down the HF, which is a weak acid, and I'm gonna do an equilibrium for it, the same as before. Weak acid is going to lose a hydrogen. That means the water is gonna act like a base. It's gonna get the hydrogen. I have that going on. Now, let's look over here, NaF. If I look at sodium fluoride, sodium fluoride in water would break up into Na plus and F minus. Now, Na plus is a spectator. It wouldn't do anything whatsoever. But what would the F minus do? Whoa, look over here. This is a common ion, isn't it? This is a common ion. So what we have, we have a common ion problem going on here. 
Now, remember, I have NAF, like I say, in, in water, it would break up into Na and F minus. Now, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, um, so I'm gonna rewrite this for a second. Let me erase this so I, is more, makes a little more sense, okay? Now, if this is a point one molar solution when everything breaks up because this would break up a hundred percent in water sodium fluoride then what do i end up with what i would end up with i would end up with 0 0.10 sodium plus and 0 0.10 f minus right because again this would completely break up in water a hundred percent dissociation one to one ratio so if everything breaks up i end up with 0 0.1 molar na plus and 0 0.1 molar f minus Okay, now what do I have here? What I have here, I have a common ion effect because F is also in my equilibrium. So I have a common ion effect going on. All right, it doesn't change the fact that I still have an equilibrium. Every time you have a weak acid and waste, you have an equilibrium, you write down the ice. You write down the ice, that doesn't, that doesn't change. Now here's what changes at the beginning. I have HF, but what else do I have? I also have F minus, don't I? I also have F minus. Now minus X, X and X. Here at the end, it would be 0 0.20 minus X, 0 0.10 plus X and X. Again, at the very beginning, this is already also in the solution. So that's why I have a common ion effect solution. Okay, now again, I'm gonna use the Ka and the Ka was given to you in the last, in part A. Uh, the Ka is again, this thing a product over reactant, nothing has changed. I'm actually gonna write this down just to make sure you guys are following this. Equilibrium constant is concentration of product over reactant. Water is not part of it because water is liquid. So then hydronium is my X. F minus would be 0 0.10 plus X over HF would be 0 0.20 minus X. And my Ka from part A is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. That hasn't changed. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to solve for x. If I solve for x, what do I get? What you probably got was 0 0.00144. Now, what is x going to tell me, which is useful? x is hydronium concentration, right? x is hydronium concentration, which is very, very useful because what can I do? I can say minus log of the hydronium concentration, which is 0 0.00144, is gonna be the pH, which is 2.85, is going to be the pH. Okay. Now, um, a couple of side notes to, to think about, okay? So over here, the pH was 1.92. Here, the pH is 2.85. So the pH is different because again, we have a common ion effect going on. You have some of these, that means the equilibrium is gonna shift to the, to the left because I have the F minus, that means I have more of this, so it's gonna shift this way. It's gonna shift this way, so your pH is a little bit more basic now. Now, the other thing to really think about, in this problem, the part B, we have a buffer solution. Why do we have a buffer solution? Because we have weak acid and we have the conjugate. So what this is, this is a buffer solution because I have a weak acid and I have a conjugate. Now, how come this wasn't a buffer solution? This wasn't a buffer solution because I have a weak acid and the conjugate, again, if you remember, when you have a weak acid, the percent dissociation is really, really low. So when you have a weak acid, the percent dissociation is extremely low. So most of it is actually gonna stay together and just a few might break up. But in this problem, 
I have a common ion effect. I have the weak acid, but I also have a lot of the conjugate in the solution also. So what I have here, I have a buffer solution. Okay. Now, every time you have a buffer solution, every time you have a buffer solution, there is another way you can do these problems. And you can use the Henderson... You can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. We also call it the HH equation. Okay, so you can use this when you have a buffer. What does it mean to have a buffer? You have a weak acid and it's conjugate base, or you have a weak base and it's conjugate acid. Now, here is the equation pH is going to equal pKa plus log the concentration of conjugate base over the concentration of acid, okay? Or pOH is going to be pKb plus log conjugate acid over the base okay now let's redo the last problem and also remember that the acid and the base have to be weak acid and base that's why you have a real buffer problem okay so last problem again last problem we have a buffer solution right last problem we had a buffer solution let's redo part b because in part B, what did we have? Part B was a buffer solution. Because we had HF and we had F minus, right? We had a weak acid and we had a lot of its conjugate. So I can do a Henderson equation for this, which would be pH is equal pKa plus log, okay? My weak acid was HF and my conjugate was F minus. Let's plug this in together. Okay. I, I we want to figure out the pH. I don't give you the pKa, but you know how to figure out the pKa. We've talked about this in lecture before. pKa is minus log of Ka. And the reason they do pKa is because Ka is such a long number usually, like very long, small, or large number. So pKa is easier because if you do pKa, you're going to end up having a number that is a little bit nicer to compare. So that means minus log of 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4. So the way you figure out pKa is minus log of Ka, you get 3.14, okay? So the pKa is 3.14 plus log, look at part B, HF was 0 0.20 molar and F minus was 0 0.10 molar. So much easier to figure this out, right? You don't have to do an ice table or anything. If you do this, what you end up getting is 2.85 and it matches what we got over here. Matches and is way easier. So don't forget, you can do the HH equation every time that you have a buffer. What's a buffer? You have a weak acid and it's conjugate, or you have a weak base and it's conjugate. But remember, you have to have a conjugate of it too, not just based on the hydrolysis by a common ion effect. You have to have some of the conjugate in there also. Now, why do you have to care about the buffer? Now, remember, here's the real life example of a buffer. Um, The pH of our body is 7.4. If you consume acidic or basic food, does the pH of your body changes? It doesn't, because if the pH of your body, which is 7.2 to 7.4, if it fluctuates, that's not good. You are going to not be alive. But our, our blood is buffered. So the pH of our blood is going to remain constant. And here is how it's buffered. Your your red blood cell 
has acidic acid and acetate. That's a buffer pair. That's your red blood cell. And your blood plasma has carbonic acid and HCO3 minus. That's your blood plasma. So these are buffer. Your blood is buffer. Our body is buffer. And these are the buffer pair. Weak acid and its conjugate. Weak acid and its conjugate. Remember, the conjugate is when you lose a hydrogen. Okay. Um, nice job. Now next time, next video, we're gonna we're gonna keep doing more practice problems.